Hello everybody, Jet here, and welcome to a new Imperator Rome playthrough with the Menander update, guys. Uh, we're going to be jumping straight in here and having a look at some of the new features. Obviously, it's all it's the culture update. Um, there are some changes to government types and things, however, I'm going to be starting a new playthrough today as, uh, well, you'll see in a moment. As the fridge, Phrygia of the Anti Anti Antigonid Empire, the Antigonid Empire. I will forever trip over saying that. As uh, Antigonus the first, however I say that, I'm not even going to try. I'm jumping into these guys because I've I've not given them a go yet. They are in a very tricky, fun position in front of lots and lots of people. So in between lots of different factions. Um, and they are chock full of cultures. It's between them and the Selekids, basically. Um, but we've got an awful lot of cultures, lots of client states, and tributaries, and things. So it's going to be a very interesting position. But it's also a very interesting position for us to look at the cultures. I, I did consider Rome or Carthage, but I've done both of them multiple times. But they do have... There have been tweaks and updates to the government systems as well, so they are well worth a look at. Um, ooh, government type map mode. That's... I don't know if that's new, but I quite like it. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's jump in. I am just going to leave all the game rules as standard. Alexander the Great. In Babylon, 18 years, years ago, the... Agriad King Alexander died suddenly at the age of 32. In the five years preceding his death, his continuing military successes had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted, uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The shock of Alexander's early death and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of the satraps and generals who attended him splintering his empire into elements ruled by these potentials, styled as the Diodaki. Potentially pronouncing that the wrong, sorry. For many years, they and their successors have been locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the empire, drawing all nations within their sphere into the influence of the conflict. The wars of the Diodaki will surely continue. Perhaps it is up to Antigonid, the Antigonid Kingdom to decide how they will end it. I think they've just put Antigonid Kingdom in there, rather than the, because it used to be Tephrygia, I think. The die is cast. I've not done too many of these guys, the the um, Antigonids, if I'm honest. I played, not the, uh, the um, Diodaki, they've played Egypt once, but anyway, first thing first. Before I do anything, I'm gonna have a quick look at this cultural bar. So we've got a lo lovely little cultural tab here, and we have lots of different cultures. All of which have different cultures. Obviously, Macedonian is the main culture. It's not the biggest culture by a long shot. And I can look at where they tend to be. Wow. <laughs> there is not much Macedonian culture there. Obviously, the other ones have much more. But we are a diverse cultural, so cultural nation. And a part of this is going to be keeping all of these happy and maintaining them. To which I have various decisions I can make, which vary depending on them. Um, they provide buffs or debuffs, you know, things like I can found a colony which uh, increases uh, assimilation to uh, Macedonian, um, for example, but obviously doesn't make them happy and lowers my tax for quite a while. Uh, and various things like um, self-rule, bits and pieces, which just give them nice buffs, but all cost stability and things to do. Um, so obviously it's, this is a game I'm going to have to play throughout um, and obviously there are only Macedonians can be uh, nobles which is the newest new highest tier which are very good they provide lots of bonuses lots of research for uh, for nobles if they are happy and then citizens um, and then obviously different nation different cultures have different maximum levels um, do I have any which are just slaves? We don't. Everybody is at least freemen. Uh, some of these aren't so happy, but I've got hardly any of them, so I don't care. It's only the big cultures I want. The more cultures you have promoted, however, I believe... Yeah. So, the more cultures I integrate fully, the lower the maximum happiness can be. So, that's something I do want to be very careful of. Obviously, as time goes on, I will hopefully unlock text and things to fix that. Anyway... 
We're about to, we are on, war, on, going for a civil war because I have disloyal characters. Uh, so let's fix that. Uh, first of all, let's fix this. So somebody here, somebody from Eliodid, needs a job. Um, are the others... Oh, that's not good. So I need somebody who's not from a family to be fired. Who can... Or I could give, give... Make one a general. That's a good way of doing it. There we go. Now, obviously, I want to work on his loyalty as well. See, that's not enough. I need somebody nice and powerful to bribe. There we go. Character bribed. Um, gained some loyalty. Gives us some corruption. But that stops the civil war. Which I hear is a good thing. I can put myself in charge of an army. I don't want to do that at the moment. Um, now, something you can do if you're playing a diplomatic things is... Characters which are off commanding or in charge of regions lose a lot of diplomatic power in the Senate at home. Which is awesome. I say I don't want to do that. He is incredibly powerful. I don't have huge armies, however. Let's put myself in charge of the main army. Oh, God. Damn it. They all want more people now. Of course they do. So some less good people in charge of some of these just to make up numbers. I can definitely afford to pop another stack out, so let's do that as well. And obviously here we've got the, the pops has changed. You can see their happiness much more in a much more delineated way. I am going to, first thing first, I am going to recruit... Uh, a random light infantry around here to put somebody in charge of to keep everybody happy. Right, we can choose an omen. Uh, pop assimilation speed, aggressive expansion change we don't need at the moment. Discipline is always useful. And fort maintenance, which I don't need. Um, I may as well go for assimilation speed at the moment. Let's actually have a look around to see how that's working. Uh, view pops. So we are still assimilating people to our main culture. Obviously, that's not necessarily so important. However, people of integrated cultures cannot be assimilated. So once they're integrated, they're not assimilated. Um, ooh, unintegrated culture happiness, plus 3%. Yes, please. And unintegrated culture group happiness, I want that too. Uh. Ah, I can't, just can't quite afford that just now. And we've got some free idea slots. We're going to go for the standard ones here. Morale and reinforcement speed. Uh, loyalty of general and admirals. And money. And then we get the tyranny reduction, the national citizen happiness, and the freeman ratio buff. Coronation of Antigonus. After Demetrius smashed the Egyptian fleet at Salmus, he sent uh, he sent most of his most trusted officer, Astrom Stromdemus of Miletus, with news of our great victory. Astromus, however I say his name, hailed Antigonus as Basilius uh, before the assembled crowd. I know I pronounced that wrong as well. And people, the people rejoiced. A coronation swiftly for followed, and Antigonus shall now be known as Basilius to us all, to all and sundry. News reached the ears of Antigonus, however, that Demetrius, now crowned as co-king, has taken to mocking the other Diodaki, Diodaki and giving them derogatory titles. Uh, Seleucus, the commander of elephants, Ptolemus, the Admiral, Lysimus, the Treasurer, and even Ag uh, the Governor of Sicily, and he is not, and he is not one of us. Though he is not one of us, when they hear of this, they will certainly not be pleased. Oh, um, so, oh, the Antigonic Kingdom gains the first Diadaki Basilius for 120 months, 10 years. 
Uh, provincial loyalty is increased. Aggressive expansion is reduced, but we lose a lot of opinion. I'll tell him he is a fool. Um, my popularity increases. As does his. Um, and we gain some buffs. Early game. I don't want a war too early. Tell him to focus uh, on victory on his victory instead. There we go. Um, so trying to stay relatively friendly for now with them all. Um, wars are going to happen, and I want to be very ready for them. And I'm going to have to start nomming pe little nations up as time goes on. Oh god, does this family not actually have somebody who is promotable? It was that problem. Well, you can come and join this army. Because I don't have any light infantry. Um, okay, let's have a quick look. Obviously, we've got a lot of vassals. Um, can I actually start integrating any straight away? Feudatories can't be integrated, though, I believe. Yes, I can integrate the... Um, no, I can integrate Feudatories, sorry. Uh, brain, I was a bit confused there for a second. I think Cappadocia needs to be the first one integrated. Um... Oh, they're a satrapy, rather than a, th rather than, um, words failing me. So let's make a couple of changes. Oh my god, I am suddenly skint. Where am I going? Where am I going? Obviously, we've got my consort, my primary heir there. Pause a second. I'm a bit concerned by the fact I am already running low on income. Ooh. Accept offer. Ah, that's what I need to do. Trade. Trade, 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 trade. Uh, trade overview. Um, manual trade. We will automatically value. No, I don't want to do that. But we want to block surface. We will not allow, allow any trade offers who would make us lose our capital bonus. So trade will happen automatically. Let's hope that fixes itself, because that could be problematic. I was going to drop what my tri tributaries paid. I may need to up that, actually. Which obviously uh, lowers their opinion of me. <laughs> the Wars of Adeodaki. There we go. Having built the largest empire the world has ever seen, Alexander... The Great died suddenly 18 years ago, with no clear successors. The empire, uh, to the empire, the, uh, his generals, the Diadaki, or successors, have since fought over Alexander's spoil. As the satrap of Phrygia, our ruler Antigonus, was not part of, the, of most of the great campaigns of Alexander, but in the conflicts of the last decade, he has arisen to be the most powerful of the successors. Recently, however, we have lost Persia and Babylon to the Seleucus. Even if we continue to grow it, we enjoy continued growing influence in Greece. Our reputation as protector of, as the a protector of Greek of free Greek cities have earned us many friends among the smaller Greek states. Otherwise, we now stand alone. The empire belongs to us. If you fail to conquer Corinthus or lose Ascalon and Tigidia, these places, uh your empire will splitter when I die. So if I fail to come for Corinthus, uh, uh, you now have a legacy of Alexander, war goal on other Diadakis. Cool, so we get a lot of things. But I need to ca capture Corinthus? Do I not already hold it? Okay, so who holds that? So we need a Macedonian war early on. Oh, that is not going to be fun. Yes, please. Am I? So I can have one more. So let's offer an alliance to Thrace. Actually, no. Let's check. 
Christ. Yeah, Frace. Offer an alliance to Frace. We will get too many relations. Um, do I not? Or do I already have too many relations? Yes. Huh. Interesting. I am very tempted to ally Frace just to get that extra ally. I need to take Corinth, Corinth from Macedon, so that is going to be fun. Though I do have a hell of a lot of vassal states around there. Um, but an early war with Maston. I'll tell you what, I, I will ally with them. And we will break it early on. So I can go straight to war with them. Um, it is a fairly hefty war, if I'm honest. Um, take Corinthos. I definitely have a claim on Corinthos. I'm a little confused as to why it's not giving me that option. I'm pause a sec, there you go. Ah, take a cheer. There we go, that's what why. Um, first things first though. You can go join the Navy. You can march around. God damn phrase. You'd have thought you'd have given me military access at the same time. Long run, obviously, we will bring Frace in, but that's a long run thing. I'm a bit concerned by our income, but I think a er good, solid, early war against Macedon uh, will be good. War in Greece. Ooh. Okay, looks like we'll get it anyway. After uh, the Herculean, Herculean effort characterised by the siege of Rhodes, the Antigonids turned their eyes west. The free cities of Greece that were marshalled into the disciplined league with the sole aim to pen the ruthless Cassander and the remnants of his forces still present in Macedon. After a brief lull in the fighting, the Antigonid generals, led by Demetrius, now insist the time is ripe uh, to provoke an offensive with, from, uh, from the Macedonian menace, irrespective of the brewing threat from Alexander's successes elsewhere. Cassander will rue the day! Okay! So I might be throwing myself straight into war here. That's absolutely fine. I'm actually quite happy with that. Let's push out a couple of extra troops. Okay, I am at war. That is a fairly early war. First things first, we are going to go straight for there. Um, obviously, I've got a lot of um, allies and friends here. Um, we ourselves are going to be sailed straight over to assist. As soon as I can call phrase to war, I am. Cause one. There we go. Let's check. Uh, overall. Um. Yeah. Okay. So Frace is now also in this war. Uh, it's a good way of attacking from the east, from the north. Um, we have received envoys from the kingdom of Ipirus, whose rulers Basilius first. Uh, wishes to forge a royal marriage between our family, the, the ruling families of our country and his own. He offers the hand of Domitia to Demetrius, to our son. And, of course, it's not an insignificant dowry. So does she have something really good? Yes, she has the blood of Aeacos, which I believe is really good. And we have the blood of Antigonus. What does that actually give? Yes. 
And we have the blood. Oh, Antigonus. So between them, theoretically, that gives them a fine proposal. C current spouses will be cast aside, if necessary. A royal wedding. Now, this is a part of a chain of events, guys. So I'm not going to spoil it for you, but... You know what? I actually want to uh, bring him down as well. So we're going to march this way. And once my navy's here, we're going to bring the army down here. So my main force is going to be here. A royal wedding. After long months of deliberation, the marriage of Domitia and Demetrius has finally gone ahead. Upon her arrival in the Antigonid kingdom, Demetrius' chariot was escorted in an opulent procession through Antigonia to a royal palace where she bit the ceremonial apple presented by Demetrius. They were then married in a lavish ceremony, attended by hundreds of guests and showered with gifts, followed by a royal banquet with feasting and reveling long into night. Oh, to be young. Nice. So, Iparus, while at war with us... Oh, they're not. So, I should have probably allied with Iparus. Um... Yeah, so I can have four. So, I'm not over. Offer alliance. There we go. <laughs> So we're going to ally with Iparus as well, and we are going to get them to uh, charge into the rear of Macedon as well. Poor Macedon. And as soon as we can, 13th of April, we will call them to arms as well. Basically, this war, I want to make sure we take a big chunk out of Macedon. Uh, as big a chunk as we can because it's really good for stabilizing the kingdom. Well, it, I say that it used to be really good for stabilizing the kingdom. You know what? I'm still going to sail up here um, because of various different cultures within Macedon, but that's not such an issue anymore. Let's just check what our best option is. I'm actually going to pop him in phalanx formation. Here is slowly falling. We're going to move other forces up to take other places, obviously. Uh, there we go. Soon. Call to arms. Oh, poor, poor Macedon. God, they are taking too long to get up here. I wasn't quite ready when we actually hit the war. Um, I am also, I think I've had a pop. It's popped up. The March of Time. Age finds us all in the age. Ooh. I don't have much time left. That is not good. That is not good at all. My leader is already getting ill. Can I seek treatment? Seek treatment, seek treatment. I gained some influence at the cost of popularity. I can prove legitimacy. My legitimacy is fine. I do like that. I'd miss the uh, schemes to get things. Political marriage, see spouse. Cool. Um. Let's have a look at our core. No, not really better. Not worth... Oh, no. It's this one I want anyway. He is from Firid, and he is very good at his job. So, there we go. Hopefully, he will keep my uh, lord alive. Okay, so it looks like uh, Macedon is... Oh, God, I've got to try and take that. Uh, no. Especially when you consider it thought I was going to lose. Oh, is it, did it think I was going to lose? Oh, 
I must be able to beat a navy that much smaller than mine. You can keep marching that way. I do want this to be a relatively quick war as well. We are currently not winning. Right, we're going to head back. Then we'll chase them down with the navy. I, need, I want to get these guys off, though. Them getting an army in behind me could be bad. But so long as I control the main point, everything is good. Do you like the way I said everything is good in a really confident way while they're marching towards my capital? Like they're sailing a fleet towards my capital, which I did manage to catch. That said, we are already, the invasions are already underway, so. Yeah, I can't actually get to a lot of their territory without a fleet. Okay, they've landed there. As much as I want to, there's not a huge amount I can do about that without sending armies back. I think I will be better here. I'm going to march into there, sail my fleet into there so we can keep fighting. And we're going to back the Thracians up. Accident in Alindia. Uh, we have been told of a major industrial accident at an extens at the extensive works in the vicinity of Alindia. So basically, there's been an accident. Uh, Can't I'm gonna have to take the hit because I'm skint. And with us starting the invasion proper, guys, and a little counter invasion going on, this is where we're gonna leave this one, guys. A uh, new episode will be coming out later today. I'm just trying to get this one out quickly. Plus, my studio is so hot, I am melting. If you are enjoying this playthrough, please do like and subscribe, guys. Comments are more than welcome down below. Obviously, as we get into this, we will look more and more at all the cultural aspects and um, bits and pieces. But first of all, war. What's more important than war, guys? Come on. You know, we need to batter Macedon into submission, and then we're in a much better place to deal with everything else which is going to come at us. As always, thank you for watching, guys. Massive, massive thank you to my patrons as well. And cheers all.